How do you do? When growing up, it's normal to think that the way your family behaves is how most other families behave. We might believe our family is typical until we experience other families with more money, a later curfew, or less fighting. And if all you've known is abuse, you might even believe that it's normal, despite feelings of despair and worthlessness. The woman in our story was raised in such an environment, but she would learn her ultimate value because her heart and mind and life were unshackled. Downstairs to get water? Okay. And Dad's holding. Dad's holding. Uh, Dad's holding what? He's holding up a knife to Mommy's <gasps> neck. What? Mommy said to go back upstairs. <gasps> should, should we go down and save her? She said we had to stay up here. <gasps> Why would Daddy want to hurt Mommy? I don't know. Are you sure he was doing that? Yes, I promise. Triple cross your heart? Stick a needle in my eye and a <gasps> boom, boom, <gasps> super sister secret. You can sleep here. Okay. This is Unshackled, dramatizing true life stories produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. While the city of Chicago still faces issues of crippling debt, violence, and unrest, it's also home to Pacific Garden Mission. We are the oldest continuously operating rescue mission in the country. We have been in the city since 1877 to serve the under-resourced in our community. And every day, hundreds of men, women, and children of all ages and backgrounds seek help. We are grateful for friends like you who send financial gifts to keep the doors open. Through your gifts, God provides nourishing meals, fresh clothing, and a safe place to sleep for those in desperate need. Above all else, He provides the love that can set us free, which is what this program celebrates. Now for broadcast around the earth, here is episode number 3,552 in the series, Unshackled, the program that makes you face yourself and think. My mom didn't know she was carrying twins. It wasn't until she labored that my sister came out from hiding behind me, where she had remained during all my mother's ultrasounds. We were brought home to our government-funded house in Connecticut, where we met my three older brothers and my alcoholic father. Perhaps my sister was hiding because she knew the world outside the womb would not be kind. Okay, Abby, you're good. Ellie, come here. Where are we going? Is that policeman taking us? No, they're not taking you. They're taking Daddy. What? It's good. It's to keep him safe, but I need you girls to go now. Go to Mrs. Philkins down the street, please. I, I want to say goodbye to Daddy. No, girls, you can't. I need you to run right now. It's not safe here. Abby, come on! Stay away from me! Nancy, what's this about? Did you call the cops on me? Daddy! Move. The girls, go outside. Abby! Can you tell me why you think calling the cops was a good idea? Dan, I don't know what to do. Oh, yeah? Well, what are you going to do now? We don't have the money to bail me out of jail. You like eating food? You like drinking out of this coffee pot, do you? Dan! The woman in our story was not given the love she needed as a child. This is the story of her road to discovering her true worth and value. The story of a woman we're calling Ellie McBride, right now on Unshackled. And that was the night Abby almost got hit in the head by a flying glass coffee pot. Seriously. He threw it off the balcony while my sister and I were on our way to Mrs. Filkins. My dad was arrested that night. We moved away, and Mom moved on. Our new house was red, which I liked. Mom's new boyfriend was Harvey, who we didn't like. Harvey came from a military background, and we were his new soldiers. Who was on dish duty tonight? We were. Me 
Captain Abby? Sit on the stairs while I inspect. What's this? This looks like a spot. Did you clean? Yes, for an hour. No, you didn't. There is a spot right there. Do them over. What? Do them over. Uh, we have homework. I thought we... I thought... Are you crying, Ellie? No. Ellie, it's okay. Stop. Come down here. What are you crying about? I don't know. I just thought we did a good job and... You, you know who cries? Babies. I'm not a baby. Well, you're sure acting like one. Abby, grab a pacifier out of the drawer. What? Do what I said. Abby's going to do the dishes. Now what you're going to do, Allie? You're going to pop this baby pacifier in your little baby mouth and go outside and show everyone what a little baby you are. And I did. I sat in our front lawn, a 12-year-old with a pacifier in her mouth, while neighbors walked by and shook their heads or laughed at me. I was so ashamed. This kind of abuse was regular with Harvey. One time, Abby didn't clean out the cat litter to his liking, and he made her take a bath in cat feces. I wished so badly I could live with my real dad, but his alcoholism made it impossible for him to keep a job or home. At one point, he lived in a school bus in a junkyard. Hey, my girl! Come on up! Hi, Dad. Where do yeah, I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me give you a hand. Yeah, you step on that wheel hub and put your left foot on... Here. Yeah, that's it. Cool. Not really. Yeah. Well... How's the cat? She's good. Thanks again. That was a really nice present. I got another one for you. Dad. Look out that window. I see trash and a broken clock and... See the bike? A bike? There's one for Abby, too. Dad, you don't have the money to... I decide what I do with my money. Well, thank you. That's so... I love it so much. I just want you to know, Ellie. I want to take care of you so badly, and I know I ain't in a position to, but... I love you so much. I know I'm not here for you all the time, but that doesn't mean I don't think about you every day and how I can be better for you. Thanks, Dad. I love you. You hear that? I love who you are. Really? Yes! I wish I could just... Want to make some special fries? Yeah, do you? I got a little electric stove. Come here, let me show you. Can I try my bike real quick? Yeah. What are you waiting for? You even like it? I love it! I believed that my dad loved me, and it meant the world to me. There was another family member who was kind to me. My mom's stepdad, Uncle Pete. He was more like a grandpa to me. And he was the first one in my family to say anything about God. There's my favorite set of twins. Hi, Uncle P. Hi, we missed you. Well, now we missed you, too. But it's too cold for us here, except for summers. I told you I freeze like a lake. Uh, but now, uh, wait a second. Last time I saw you, Ellie, you had two ears. I still do. I still have. If you have two ears, then what incarnation am I holding in my hand? <laughs> I've seen that one before. I haven't. That looks like an ear. It's just his finger. What's for dinner? We've been cooking all day. A delicious feast of dog tongue and mosquitoes. Uncle Pete! <laughs> Chicken. <gasps> yes! Grandma, can I have a little bite now? So, uh, you have been going to church since we've been in Florida? Not really. Mom doesn't... Mom doesn't like going all that much. Hmm. Why is that? I think she don't fit in. She thinks she don't fit in. Maybe. Ellie, you just know, whether you go to church or not, that Jesus loves you more than you know. You hear me? Don't you ever forget that. All right. He changed my life when I got saved. You know what that means? Saved? Um, yeah. Well, we'll take you to church with us this summer. That'll be nice.
I had no idea what saved meant, but everyone else seemed to. I was always the quiet one, but I observed a great deal while not talking. I saw people I wanted to be like and people I didn't. I didn't know what part God could play in my life, but I wanted to. I just didn't want to look foolish for not getting it. I looked foolish enough at school. Harvey dressed us in hideous dresses, made us shave our heads, and only let us shower once a week. He told me I would never be good at anything, but I joined the cross-country team anyway. Did Ellie win again? Of course. How does she do it? I don't know, but I Did Coach say we're doing another one, or is that it? That's it. Ellie, question. Do you think having short hair makes you faster? Oh, I don't... No, probably not. Well, then what is your secret? Mm, I don't know. I love to run. I wish I felt that way. Why am I even on this team? Maybe you should try it for the school play instead. They don't care if you're a horrible athlete. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I'll see you guys tomorrow. Stop being so good and making us look so bad. I took 27th place in state out of 500 girls. My coach believed I could run in college, even get a scholarship, but she also saw the toll my home life was taking on me. It was around this time that my eating troubles began. Coach belonged to a church that served homeless meals every Friday, so she saw that my family qualified and ate there regularly. I chose to eat less and less. One night, I thought I was going to burst from the pressure of it all. I sat on the stairs for hours where Harvey made us sit every night while he watched. In sports, the International Basketball League... You better be sitting up straight. Yes, sir. I am. I prayed a silent prayer, my first. God, if you are real, please intervene on my life right now. Please, God. This man is making me hurt so bad, and I don't know how I can go through high school with him here. Please make him leave or help me leave. I need you to help me. A few months later, God seemed to answer my prayer. She saw you with her. Oh, your mom can't hardly see. We all know that. My mom can make out another woman who's not me. I don't know why you're reacting like this. All the more reason you need to leave. you're, You're gonna regret that. Get out of my house! Freedom. I thought life without Harvey would be incredible. No long dresses, no sitting on the stairs, no emotional abuse. How could I have known it would only get worse? We'll continue with Ellie's story in just a moment. Here's the president of Pacific Garden Mission, Phil Kwiatkowski. Thanks, Timothy. At Pacific Garden Mission, we see an increasing number of women come through our doors in desperate need of support. Many come with their children seeking shelter, food, and even just support. We created a mother's and children's ministry just for them. We begin by welcoming them into a safe facility, away from the dangers of having an abusive home or no home at all. Our staff cares for their physical needs. We feed them warm meals, showers, clothing, and for some, the first safe night's sleep they've had in months. We can house 300 women a night and we have temporary housing for those who need to stay for a longer period. We care for the hearts and souls of these women too. We believe they are precious to God and that they have something beautiful to show us about God's image. Counselors walk with women through their spiritual needs and we introduce them to the possibility of new life in Jesus Christ. We are able to provide all these services without cost to those in need because of generous donors like you. Thank you for your continued support of Pacific Garden Mission and our Mothers and Children Ministry. For more information about what we do and how to participate, contact us at Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. Thank you for your time and for remembering the homeless men, women, and children at Pacific Garden Mission.
Without Harvey around, our family was free to go our own ways. Now my mother was out at bars all night, my siblings started drinking and doing drugs, and while I tried smoking, I quit after a while. I did not want to be like the rest of my family. I stuck to my running. One day, I was at home by myself. Out of nowhere, I felt a strong urge to leave my house. Though I didn't understand it, I followed the impulse and walked outside. Just then, my sister came by on her bike. Ellie, get back! What? The house is on fire! No, it isn't. I was just watching TV. Chris is inside. No, Chris is down the street. Look behind you. Oh, no! The roof is moving. No! Mom! The neighbor's called. Mom, oh, my son! What are we going to do? What are we going to do? The Red Cross took care of us for a week. Then mom said she couldn't take care of us and we had to find somewhere to go. My brother Chris stole drugs and was put in a group home. My sister found a friend to live with down the street. I didn't know where to turn. I was going to be taken by the state if I didn't figure something out. I went to a friend, Kelly, whom I barely knew and asked if I could stay with her. She agreed. I cleaned out this drawer for you. Thank you. And let's see. Oh, my mom said to ask if you had any allergies or dietary, um, anything weird. Oh, no, but my mom will take care of that. She'll send me money to buy groceries. My mom says your mom probably won't because she doesn't care about you. I mean, obviously. Just because, like, here you are, you know? Somewhere deep down... I knew she was right, but I couldn't let myself go there. I had no place to carry that pain. My running career began to subside. I became depressed. Started smoking cigarettes. I missed my mom, crazy as she was. Eventually, she agreed to let me come live with her in Ellington, where she stayed with a guy she met from a bar. I had to change high schools right before my junior year. I hated leaving my sister. I didn't know anyone in Ellington, but the girl behind me in my new math class wouldn't leave me alone. Did you do the homework? Um, yeah. Were we supposed to do the backside or no? I think just the front. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How was your weekend? Oh, it was fine. How's your mom's eye? Wait, was it her eye or her thigh? Her eye. Uh, she's got a tumor in it. It doesn't seem to be getting any better. Oh, I'm sorry. Thanks. Yeah, it stinks. I just know she doesn't have the money to take care of it, and... Anyway, whatever. It must be scary. And hard for you, too. Yeah. Are you doing anything tonight? Homework? <laughs> Want to go to my youth group with me? What's that? It's like church, but it's on the weekend, and it's just for students. So, good music and stuff. Cool. It's a really nice group of people. I think you might like it. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I'd love to go. Thanks. Awesome. We'll just go straight from school. I started going to youth group with Lauren and spending the night at her house every week. I found a group of people who were excited to see me, who asked what was going on in my life and made me feel cared for. One night, Lauren's parents asked me to pray with them, and I did, just so that they would accept me. I knew I needed God, but I didn't understand, and I wasn't ready. We graduated and went on to Pensacola Christian College. Here we are. My mom spent most of my high school years out partying. I was scared to leave for Florida, but I didn't miss what I had left behind. Lauren and I drifted apart, but I ended up getting close with her roommate, Jasmine. In college, I started to spiral. My eating disorder was worse than ever, and it was killing me. It's open. There you are. Hey, Jasmine. Hey, why weren't you in history? Uh, it's a long story. Well, I don't have anywhere to be. And I brought snacks. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, don't make me eat these all myself. I'm not super hungry, but thanks. I wasn't in class because I was at the hospital. Oh, no. Why? 
I'm getting these horrible headaches, like, so bad I can barely see straight. Oh, did, did they figure out why? Are you eating? Um, not really. Oh, Ellie. I just, like, I don't even want to get out of bed. I'm also failing literally every class, so none of that can be helping. They diagnosed me as hypoglycemic, too. Oh, Ellie. Ellie, I am so sorry. I don't know what to do, Jazz. I don't know what to do. I remain so grateful for Jasmine's help through that time. She really listened to and encouraged me without trying to fix me. I spent lots of holidays with her family since I never wanted to go home to mine. I also benefited from the help of a Christian counselor. But after about three years, we weren't making any progress. There you go. Thank you. How did it go with your eating plan this week? Fine. Really? Yeah. Mostly. At your weigh-in, the doctor told me you lost ten more pounds. Well... Did you get through your finals? I couldn't go. What? I knew I wasn't going to pass, and I... Ellie! I know, I know, You really I just... won't pass if you don't even show up. I know, I... I'm sorry. What is it? Dr. Mann? I can't help you anymore. What? I've seen you every week for three years, and I don't know, Ellie. I, 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 I just don't know what more I can possibly do. Yes, you can help me. You've helped me so much. I've given you all the tools I have to give, but at some point your healing is in your hands, Ellie. Yours and God's. Let me read you something. This is from the book of James, chapter 4, verse 17. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Do you know what that means? Why can't I do it then? What is wrong with me? I went to my room. I stayed there for a week. I was completely broken. I was doing wrong over and over and letting my past control my life. I knew I needed this Jesus I had heard about over the years. I knew now that I didn't want to just pray some prayer as a formality. I wanted and needed his power in my life. God, it's two in the morning. I'm looking in the mirror and I can't believe. How did I ever get so small? I'm so sorry. I don't think... I don't think this is what you wanted me to do with the body you gave me. I'm sorry for hurting myself. I want you to... to live in me if that's something you can do. I want you to use me. Please, please forgive me. I'm ready to change with your help. Have you tried this kind? No. Ready for this? Bacon, mac, and cheese. What? On a chip? I'm telling you, weird chips flavors are my specialty. Mm, not bad, actually. I know, right? Thanks for coming over. Duh. I was so excited to hear your news. Yeah, I feel, I feel really good. I mean, like, I'm still having a hard time eating these chips. Yeah, that's not going to change overnight. I still don't have the money to finish school or the grades to graduate. Hey, hey, one step at a time. I actually booked a plane ticket to leave. But I was praying about it, and I just felt like I shouldn't. Look at you. That, that's amazing. <laughs> you should pay attention to that. I want to thank you, Jazz, and I also want to apologize. You've gone so above and beyond the call of a friend. You and Dr. Man both. You've literally kept me alive. You didn't give up on me. And I'm so, so grateful. And sorry for putting you through that. Please. I've been a lot. Hey, I, I mean, yeah, you did stress me out, but, <laughs> but, but only because I love you so much. I love you too, Jazz. So much. 
I struggled with my eating disorder for a while, but over time it grew to have less and less hold on me. Eventually, I reconnected with a college friend, Timothy, who became my husband. I would never have been ready for love or marriage without the healing love of God. He even redeemed my relationship with my mom, who accepted Jesus into her life at our wedding ceremony. Now, Timothy and I serve the Lord together through the church and in our family. Mommy? Yes, sweetheart. Will you do my hair? You bet I will. Braids or pony? Braids, please. You got it. Did you finish all your eggs? Yes. You know why that's important? So I grow into the strongest girl in the world. That's right. Because who made you strong? God. <laughs> Don't pull. Oh, sorry, love. God's also responsible for all this beautiful brown hair. Yep. He made me just how he wanted me. Right, Mom? Right, Hope. Listening friend, maybe Ellie's story has stirred up something in you. Perhaps you too have struggled with an eating disorder, with abuse or neglect in your family. To talk to someone who wants to know your story and connect you to help, or introduce you to the giver of new life, Jesus Christ, get in touch with Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607.